one of the top metalcore bands of the 2000s, Avenged Sevenfold, a five-piece band originating from Huntington Beach, California, has made a name for themselves over their 25 years of being a band. Led by vocalist Matthew Sanders, stage name M. Shadows, the band has been recognized for their innovative sound and image as a band. Using dual guitars led by Sinister Gates and Zacky Vengeance, and incredible drumming over the years from various drummers, most being recorded by Jimmy Sullivan, known as The Rev, Avenged Sevenfold knew they had something and are still going today. Just recently releasing their ninth studio album, Life is But a Dream, saw the band take a new approach to their style and music as we know it, which with any change, garnered a lot of negative and positive attention from the press. In order to fully understand this band and who they are, we have to go back to the influence of the members and find out why Avenged Sevenfold is what they are today and what shaped them along the way. Avenged Sevenfold, the name being a reference to the story of Cain and Abel in the Bible, was born in 1999 by Matt Sanders, Jimmy Sullivan, Zachary Baker, and Matt Went. Matt Sanders and Matt Went previously played in punk man The Successful Failure, who all I could find released one record titled Not On Label. When I looked this band up and this record, I didn't find much to write home about. Zachary Baker played guitar for Society Down in MPA, and Jimmy Sullivan played for Suburban Legends. They went on to record their first demo, being three songs recorded at the A-Room Studios in Orange County, California. They played their first two shows at the Walnut California City Hall in February of 2000. They recorded two more songs to add to this demo and sent it to Good Life Recordings, a small independent record label and a good start for the band, and were later signed by the label. Matt went and left the band after this, and they picked up the previous bass of Suburban Legends, one who the Rev worked with in the past, Justin Meacham. The label suggested they get stage names, so Matt Sanders became M. Shadows, Zachary Baker became Zachy Vengeance, Justin Meacham became Justin Sane, and Jimmy Sullivan became The Rev. After this, they recorded their first album known as Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. After they recorded the album, Sinister Gage joined the band and they re-recorded To End the Rapture and War Miss on the Soul, which they then released as singles in April of 2001. After complications with the record, it was pushed back and released in July of 2001 under Good Life Recordings. Around August of the same year, Justin Meacham reportedly attempted unaliving himself by drinking an extreme amount of cough syrup. Event Sevenfold then joined the Take Action Tour in 2003 as a result of this, which tries to bring awareness to teen suicide. During hospitalization, he didn't recover and had to leave the band. M. Shadow said Meacham, quote, Permafried his brain and was in a mental institution for a long time. And when you have someone in your band who does that, it ruins everything that's going on all around you, and it makes you want to do something to prevent it from happening to other people. The band replaced Meacham with Damian Ash, but he never appeared in any records, and was later replaced by Johnny Christ. Avenged Sevenfold left Good Life Recording and signed to Hopeless Records. They really re-released their debut album and started to receive recognition for their work. The seed was planted. The sophomore album would decide where the band goes next, with a new bass and a new guitar player, forming their most known lineup to this day. Christ joined the band, they released their second studio album and their first recording under Hopeless Records, Waking the Fallen. This saw the band refine their sound and take the next step towards being a known band in the mainstream, receiving rave reviews. Robert L. Dorschuk from All Music or the All Music Guide wrote, and whether attacking a riff in unison or in harmonized parts, the double threat guitars of Sinister Gates and Zacky Vengeance do their duty like search and destroy commandos in and out fast, leaving devastation in their wake. Especially noteworthy and note heavy is the guitar solo that blazes through the last moments of second heartbeat.
received praise from Billboard, with the magazine comparing events that unfold to like Knopf's Iron Maiden and Metallica. The song Chapter 4 was featured in NASCAR Thunder 2004, Madden NFL 04, and NHL 04. After the success of Waking the Fallen, the band signed with Warner Brothers Records. Avenged Sevenfold toured again on Van's Warped Tour and recorded a video for the song Unholy Confessions, which was featured on MTV. began to work on their third studio album, first under Warner Brothers Records, then as City of Evil, their biggest commercial success up until this point. The album was released in 2005 and debuted at number 30 on the Billboard and sold over 30,000 copies in its first week of release. This record refined the sound and again had a more thrash metal sound as opposed to the metalcore sound compared to other records up to this point. The album also saw M. Shadows working with vocal coach Ron Anderson, who worked with people such as Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses, and Chris Cornell of Soundgarden. M. Shadow said in an MTV interview, When we started working on this record, we said, You know what? None of our favorite bands are super extreme. They just write really good melodic songs that are still heavy. This featured popular songs such as Backcountry, Beast and the Harlot, and other hits. This saw people draw comparisons to Guns N' Roses, especially on the song Seize the Day, which had a similar structure and style to November Rain. <laughs> The tour for this album was great. This saw them be invited to OzFest in 2006. Backcountry reached number two on the Billboard Mainstream Rock Charts, number six on the Billboard Modern Rock Charts, and the video made to number one on MTV's Total Request Live. This record would end up eventually going gold. The band ended the City of Evil tour to go work on their next record, which would release more iconic songs in their discography and see one of their strangest songs released to this day. In October of 2007, the band released their second record under Wonder Brothers, fourth studio album titled Avenge Sevenfold. This self-titled record debuted at number four on the bill over 200. Critical acclaim and almost easy were released prior to the album's release as singles. The third single for the record came in 2008 called Afterlife. And their song titled Dear God, their Take It A Country Rock song was released in June of 2008, finally finishing the record. One song off this record is met with extreme controversy due to its lyrical content titled A Little Piece of Heaven. The lyrics I can't repeat on YouTube without getting this video removed, but it talks about topics that shouldn't be discussed in a song. Although very musically interesting and definitely a left turn for the band's normal sound, featuring a large string and brass section. Return of Classic Rock said in 2021 that it was their Bohemian Rhapsody and has the symphony to prove it. The song has been compared to the film scores of Danny Elfman, specifically toward The Nightmare Before Christmas and Beetlejuice. The song's introduction interpolates Hungarian Dance No. 5 by Johannes Brahms. The band headlined the 2008 Taste of Chaos tour with lots of top bands, and saw the release of the Live in the LBC DVD. 
live footage of their performance in Long Beach, California, which is a lot of the background video I have been using in this video. Although this record received mixed reception, the following events would see the band have to reflect on themselves and would see Avenged Sevenfold once again break their record numbers for their next album. Before I talk anything about the album Nightmare and the success it ga garnered over its time, I need to address something else that happened in this time period. On December 28, 2009, James the Rev Sullivan was found dead in his home at 28 years old. On June 9, 2010, the cause of death is revealed to be, as the Rolling Stone describes it, acute polydrug intoxication due to combined effects of oxycodone, oxymorphone, diazepam, nordiazepam, and ethanol. The band expressed their grief over the death of the Rev in a statement made to the press, and the Sullivan family thanked fans for their support. In a number of interviews, the band said they considered disbanding at the time. The Rev was truly a great drummer and influenced many drummers to begin their drumming career. He is seen influencing the band's records even to this day, with lyrics on Beautiful Morning and the bridge melody on Mattel, both songs released on their most recent album, Life is But a Dream. He also did a lot of work for their upcoming album we will be discussing next Nightmare. May he rest in peace. Following the death of the Rev, the band entered the studio with drummer Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater to record the drum tracks for their upcoming album. The single from the record titled Nightmare was released digitally on May 18, 2010. The album was fully released on July 27, 2010. The album was well received by fans and mostly positive from critics. The album sold 163,000 units in its first week and debuted at number one in the Billboard 200. Mike Portnoy would then step away from the band after doing three shows for them overseas. The drummer to go on tour with them would be Aaron Elahai. He previously played with the band Confide in 2007 and 2009. He was not named a full-time replacement at the time, and Avenged Sevenfold headlined the Golden God Awards by Metal Hammer, a heavy metal magazine, and won three awards at the show, being Best Vocalist, Epiphone's Best Guitarist for Sinister and Zaki, Affliction's Album of the Year for their record Nightmare, and Mike Portnoy would win Drum Workshop's Best Drummer for his work on the record. In November and December of 2011, the band would go on their Buried Alive tour with Hollywood Undead, Asking Alexandria, and Black Veil Brides. How would the band rebound from the Rev's death and could they top their nightmare sales and success? Uh, maybe not tonight, but uh... This song is called Hail to the King. And all you need to know is one word, and that word is hail. Side note for this next era, in September of 2012, Avenged Sevenfold released a single titled Carry On, which would be featured in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Aaron Elahai was confirmed as an official replacement and in an interview with Metal Hammer said their next album would sound more like Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. Their sixth studio album would then be released in August of 2013 titled Hail to the King. This is the first album without any contribution from the Rev. Hail to the King charted at number one in the US Billboard 200 and several other country Billboard 200 charts. The band would go on to headline Monster Energy's Welcome to Rockville two-day music festival and would be joined by more than 25 very well-known rock acts such as Motorhead, Seether, Korn, and others. In an interview with Loudwire, M. Shadows said they had something in the works to celebrate the 10-year anniversary of Waking the Fallen, their second record. And then Waking the Fallen Resurrected was released in August of 2014. This charted number 10 on the U.S. Billboard 200.
In October 2014, M Shadows announced the band was working on their seventh studio album in 2015. Also in 2015, they announced they are parting ways with drummer Aaron Elahai due to creative differences. In November of the same year, the band announced Brooks Wackerman to be the next person to take the sticks for the band. Known for playing with Bad Religion, Suicidal Tendencies, and a few other bands in his career starting in 1990. Zachy Vengeance would describe the new album in an interview with Kerrang! Magazine went in all sorts of different melodic and aggressive sounds, calling it aggro. Side note, in 2016 the band was sued by Warner Brothers Records for trying to leave the label. The band stated they only wanted to leave because most of the executives that got them in had left at this point. The band was set to enter the studio soon. They once again were announced to play many big shows with bands such as Slipknot, Breaking Benjamin, Alice in Chains, Slayer, and others. In October 2016, the band started showing their Death Bat logo in odd places. It appeared as a projection in London, Berlin, Toronto, and Paris. And finally, the new album was released titled The Stage. This album was a concept album about the use of artificial intelligence in today's society and other topics. This is the first time the band released a record under a new label, Capitol Records, another huge label in the industry. The album opened to favorable reviews. The band was announced to be the main support act of Metallica's World Wired 2016 stadium tour alongside Gojira and Volbeat. In December, the band released a deluxe edition of the stage which included one new track, six covers, and four live tracks from the European tour. Im Shadows announced that the band planned a big U.S. Summer 2018 tour and the band would start working on their next album in late 2018. Unfortunately, due to a blood, b blood blister in Im Shadows' throat, the band had to cancel the shows. They were nominated at the 60th Annual Grammy Awards and Best Rock Song for the stage. The band then released a single titled Mad Hatter, which would appear on the soundtrack for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Our next era will be the last era we discuss. If you made it this far in the video, let me know what you think of this video and anything you would have wanted to hear about for future videos. In September of 2018, Sinister Gates revealed in an interview with Loudwire the band was working on their 8th studio album, saying it's still early on, but working on a bunch of stuff. Zach Yud announced later the band was taking all of 2019 off to focus on the new record. In March of 2023, nearly three years after we'd heard anything from the band, the single Nobody was released with an accompanying music video. This video would skyrocket on the YouTube charting charts and grow anticipation for their upcoming release. Throwing a lot of people off balance with this new style the band was going in, the thrash metal band we knew was really diving into progressive metal. We saw a taste of it with the stage, but they were in deep now. Life is But a Dream contains all types of different sounds, with the album ending in a beautiful piano track, signifying the setting to the heavens or the afterlife. The album travels through themes such as growing up, corporate America, and other untested waters. The album received great critic praise. On Metacritic, it received an 87 out of 100. With Sputnik Music saying something I think we can reflect on for this most recent record and something a lot of fans may be needing to hear. If you were on Twitter when this record released, you probably would think the public perception wasn't very good. A lot of the older thrash metal fans weren't very happy with what they were hearing and wanted the old events to unfold back. The City of Evil waking the fallen events to unfold, the dueling guitars, the fast riffs. They wanted that back. But here's what I'll say. I'll leave you with this review and I want you to tell me where you think Avenged Sevenfold is headed next. Do they continue down the prog metal path? Do they go back to the metalcore sound? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching and have a great day.